Hi everyone, and thanks for being with us today. I am Pietro Morerio from Italian Institute of Technology, and I'm presenting our recent work, End-to-End -end Pairwise Human Proxemics from Uncalibrated Single Images, a work done in collaboration with my colleagues at IIT, Matteo, Yiming, and Alessio. In our work, we introduce DeepProx, which is an end-to-end -end pipeline for estimating interpersonal distances between people in the wild. Application of DeepProx range from social distancing violation detection to the design of public spaces for safety rules compliance. DeepProx estimates pairwise metric distances between pairs of people starting from a single images and using only normalized 2D skeletal joints extracted from an off-the-shelf detector and without the need of calibrating the camera. The intuition is that even without a context that is only with skeletal joints, even humans are able to reason about the relative distances between people by implicitly assuming that all the feet of the people lie on the same plane. Actually, humans can also approximately reason about absolute distances by leveraging the metric reference provided by the human size, the size of the joints. Our method relies on a standard off-the-shelf person detector, which outputs skeletal joints in the form of 2D points. After normalizing them, they are fed to a pose encoder to produce a person representation PI. People representations are then concatenated pairwise and an additional neural network, which we call pairwise regressor, produces a representation Q from which we regress the actual metric distance between the couple of people. Ideally, the representation Q should be independent from the camera position. This is because we do want to generalize to unseen camera configurations. However, this is not the case. In fact, from Q we are able to predict with high confidence both the angle theta and the height of the camera H. And for this reason, in the method, we introduce a self-calibration branch which aims is actually to predict h and theta. However, by inserting a gradient reversal layer in between the self-calibration head and the representation q, we force the representation q to be uninformative for h and theta. A bit of background on this. Uh, a gradient reversal layer is a layer in a neural network which uh, behaves as the identity function in the forward and reverses and scales the gradient in the backward pass. Uh, this was proposed back in 2015 by Ganin and Lempinski uh, for unsupervised domain adaptation, where uh, features should be independent of the domain where they come from. You can see on the plot on the right the effect of the gradient reversal layer. So the red curves are the loss for the self-calibration head for H and theta respectively without reversing the gradient. So basically setting lambda equals to zero gradients are not flowing through the GRL and the representation Q is only learned by regressing the distance. And the self-calibration head is basically detached from the network and can learn from the fixed representation Q. And as you can see, we are able to predict with high precision both H and theta, meaning that Q is actually retaining a lot of information on the camera position and angle. However, when we set lambda equals to 1, the gradients are actually flowing through the GRL, but with a reverse sign, which means Q is actually built to be independent of h and theta, an informative of h and theta. And you can see the green curve where we are not able to predict anymore with good precision 
h and theta. Instead, the value is constant and the error is 2 meters for h and 10 degrees, 8 degrees actually for theta. We evaluate our pipeline on four datasets, EPFL Wildtrap, Kitty, Oxford Town and EPFL MPV. We compare against Monoloco, which is a method for 3D pedestrian localization from 2D images. We evaluate our pipeline both in terms of mean absolute error between uh, predicted distance and actual distance and in terms of F1 score for social distancing violation detection uh, by setting a threshold of 1.5 meters uh, on the distance. Here the protocol is one sequence out, so basically we leave one sequence out and we train on the rest and test on the sequence left out. So for sequence 13 of Kitty, for example, we train on the rest and test on 13. As you can see, we do outperform uh, previous methods like Monoloco, uh, even if Monoloco uh, leverages the intrinsic parameter of the camera. And uh, you can also see that the GRL uh, almost always brings an improvement, with the only exception of EPFL and PV, where actually uh, we have a decrease in performance. But as you can see, this is just two centimeters. Oxtown is quite a problematic uh, data set because the camera position is very different from all of the other data sets, and people are very far apart, up to 30 meters. So the average error of, of 1.87 meters is actually not too much if you compare with the maximum uh, distance there can be between pairs of people in this data set. Also, we compare with a previous method uh, for a visual social distancing violation recently published in WACBI and Except for Oxtown, we outperform it. We also outperform Monoloco and a previous method for image rectification called Autorect. Here are some qualitative results. Uh, as you can see in the video, uh, we are estimating the distances between each pair of people. The algorithm is actually quite light and fast. For 20 people in the scene, which means uh, 190 pairs, uh, we only need 3 milliseconds for a single forward pass of the network, that is to predict uh, all uh, distances in the scene. Hope you enjoyed this work and hope to see you for some discussion at the poster session.